It's July 13th, 2014, in Atizapan de Zaragoza, a town just outside of Mexico City. A teenager is setting up a YouTube channel. The channel will be small and briefly lived, but there will be three videos put on it. But this channel is important. It is the birth of a name that you'll remember for years to come. His name is the Wii Meister, also known now as Meister, aka the single best Game & Watch player in Smash Ultimate and in Smash 4, and is currently ranked number 6 on the current PGRU season rankings. Before any of that, at the very start of his Smash career, Enrique Hernandez Solis was the Wii Meister. Over the years, he shortened his tag to TW Meister and eventually to Meister. And as his entire tag shifted, the entire world of the Smash community did as well. That goofy teenager would eventually grow into being one of the strongest competitors in Smash Bros Ultimate. Meister would literally go from being unknown to being one of the best and most cheered against players in the world of Smash. In just three years, Meister would become so good at the game that he would turn his understated and underplayed main into one of the best and most hated characters in the game. He'd forge a dynamic style that would push the boundaries of the game and frankly, piss a lot of people off. He'd create one of the most interesting storylines in all of Ultimate, and all of it would start with a Little Mac main and a Mexico City local. And before we get into that, I want you guys to remember to check out ProGuides.com where you can get on-demand coaching through Instapro to help you get the most out of the time that you're putting into Ultimate. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to Instapro along with a plethora of exclusive content, all posted daily. Check the link in the description below for more about ProGuides. You can also tune into our live courses that are taught at 12 p.m. Pacific time on our YouTube channel by people just like me, <laughs> hey, so be sure to check that out. Mexico City quietly has one of the best Smash scenes in the world. Their distance from the US, their language barrier, and their broadcast make them fly under the radar. But they produce players like MKLeo and Meister for a reason. Like MKLeo before him, Meister came up in the Mexico City locals, in particular, the Smash Pendiant series. But like most Smash players, Meister's first tournament was far from the first time he played. Meister has played since Melee, where he discovered Game & Watch and picked him up for the unique retro style, and he'd get sucked into the competitive side of Smash before glory. Meister wouldn't go to a local until one of his best friends, a little Mac player named Topo, convinced him to. And that's where, according to Meister, the story starts, going so far as to credit Topo for starting his career. Also like most Smash players, Meister's first tournament was rough. On January 26, 2017, Meister went 1-2 at Smash Pendy at 69. At that point, all eyes were on MKLeo, who won the tournament using mostly Shulk. But winning or losing didn't matter. What mattered was that Meister wanted to play more Smash. He'd return and gradually become a regular at Smash Pendiant, getting better and better with each appearance. At Smash Pendiant 70, he'd go 2-2 and this time lose to Surge, MKLeo's cousin and a strong player in his own right. Ranked second on Mexico City's PR at the time, Surge makes quick work of Meister, but you can see the nascent hints of what becomes Meister's future playstyle. He attempts the aggressive edge guard, but misses the timing. He goes for the big comeback play, but falls short. On April 20th, at Smash Pendiant 80, Meister would reach 9th place before falling to Cloudy and Salva, ranked 6th and 7th on Mexico City's PR. More of Meister's playstyle as we know begins to form. He covers the screen of hitboxes and applies relentless pressure that baits the opponent into punishes that don't work. 9th at a local might not sound impressive, but the path to grow in Smash is slow, and Smash Pendiant was full of players who had been competing in Smash for years. Top Mexican players like Javi and MKLeo had played since the Brawl days. Meister getting ninth mean he was catching up to all the players with years of competitive experience in just three months. And Meister was in the one region where the Game & Watch matchup was very normal. Before there was Meister, the world's best Game & Watch was Reggie Shikimi, a player still active in Mexico today. So most of the players in his region did know the matchup too. But Meister isn't easily discouraged. He can get JV2 stocked in one game and win the next one. He can go down 2-0 in a set and still crack jokes and smile like nothing's wrong. And that mentality would be vital to growing within a scene that has already been well developed. 2017 in general would be the year of growth for Meister. Each month he'd get better and better. At Smash Pendy in 85, he got revenge on Salva and beat Poyo, earning a 5th place finish. And Meister would show off another amazing talent, the comeback. One hit away from death, he takes the last stock without being touched. From here on out, Meister starts taking wins off better and better players and rising up the power ranks. Absent in spring, then 16th in summer, then 10th in autumn, then 7th in winter. 
In 2017, Meister went from a total unknown to a rising star in a hotbed of Smash talent. And in 2018, his star would keep on rising and his talent would take him even far beyond Mexico City. Genesis 5 would occur on the weekend of January 19th, just about one week shy of the first year anniversary for Meister's competitive career. But Meister would be celebrating all the same. The Game & Watch main was barely known beyond Mexico and got seeded 559th. By the end of the tournament, he'd placed 13th and upset that seed by 546 places. Not bad for a first international tournament if I say so myself. <laughs> hey. In the tournament, Meister would deliver two massive upsets, one the fatality, the face of post-Melee Captain Falcon and 14th ranked player in the world at the time, and the other to Mistake, also known as Tamim. At the time, Tamim was ranked 6 on the PGR and was one of the best Bales in the game. Game 1 goes to Meister, who is this guy? And Bale was undeniably the best character around. Although Bale was overpowered, she had one disadvantage. Nearly every good player knew the matchup. Because there was no other choice, it was either learn how to beat Bayonetta or drown in pools. And in 2018, Meister would become a nightmare for many unsuspecting Bayonetta mains, starting with Tamim. Meister had a much better understanding of Bayo than Tamim did of Game & Watch, and it showed pretty much right away. Game & Watch had a unique reversal to Bayonetta's dreaded ladder combo, his up special. The up special was invincible in startup and activated so fast that it would kill Bayo just for attempting the ladder combo. And in late Smash 4's meta, that was a beautiful thing. Oh, you thought you were going to kill Meister off of one opening? <laughs> no, Meister kills you off of one opening. It doesn't matter what character you picked. So Meister beat Tamim, and in the process, he got the reverse of his current reputation in Ultimate. He was a low to hero, sure, but he was also a very consistent Bayo Slayer. And just by being on screen, he took out the ladder combo that aggravated so many people. On top of that, his playstyle was a breath of fresh air in Smash 4, and you can see why if you ever took a look at his most successful Smash 4 tournament, Combo Breaker 2018. Meister was faster paced and aggressive in-game that could be slow and defensive. He went for edge guards in a game where ledge trapping was the norm, and he had highly technical big damage combo trees that only few other characters had. And most of those skills came together in one smooth 30 second long sequence in the grand finals. Meister hitting. Oh my god! Combo Breaker was a huge first placing that gave Meister wins over Chag, Tyroy, and Esam. It helped him get ranked 44th on a PGR version 5 and 81st on a PGR 100 for Smash 4. But the next chapter of his story would overshadow all of that. On March 2018, Nintendo released a teaser for the game that would change Meister's life both for the better and worse. When Ultimate released on December 7th, the whole meta underwent a scramble as Ultimate changed the kits of several characters, including Mr. Game & Watch. His forward air and up air were totally different, changing his neutral and his kill confirms in a big way. He generally got placed in low tier or low mid tier. But Meister always had faith in his main, even back in the Smash 4 era where everyone wrote the character off. His final Smash 4 matchup chart looks like it's for high tier as well. Meister kept faith in Game Watch even as he was struggling to win with them in the early days of Ultimate. In particular, he bombed out at 129th at Genesis 6 and got a disappointing 49th at Smash and Splash. However, Meister was still quietly winning at smaller tournaments like Ragnarok and fittingly Combo Breaker 2019. Although he wasn't having a terrible year, Ultimate had more competitors than ever before and he didn't make it on PGR. As the year went on, Meister got a better grasp of his character's tools, and in Ultimate's second season, he would push the character to new heights and new hatreds. Meister's success came with a ton of character hate, which unfortunately became hate for him as a player. See, Meister always had a fast, erratic style where he uses whiffs, pressure tools, and deceptive hitboxes to condition and bait opponents into bad decisions. In Smash 4, that style broke the norm, a low tier playing fast and loose. But in Ultimate, Meister's style incidentally embodied a lot of things that people didn't like about the game. People complain about Ultimate having too much safe aerial spam, and not enough punish windows, and high damage in the wrong places, and too many defensive options that could just reset neutral. Game & Watch had all of that with an RNG kill option cherry on top. Meister wasn't at fault. He simply used Game & Watch's strong options to win games, but he quickly became a whipping boy for the Smash community. The hate often discouraged Meister. He was new to being a top player, and he's not the type to play the villain either. He was more of a goofy, lighthearted player that would cosplay and actually play Ryu at a local. 
but all the hate hasn't slowed him down. After picking up results at C and B tiers, he went on a run at Super Smash Con 2019, going 12-2 and placing fifth. At Super Smash Con, he put his name on the map with a confident 3 over Light, the 10th best player in the world. From then on, Meister would routinely place top 8 at all big events. Ironically, at Big House, he would get the best result and biggest near miss of his entire career. With two spots to Smash Summit 2 on the line, Big House had insane stakes and insane competition. Meister beat Shuton, Sam Sora, and Zack Ray, only losing back-to-back -back Game 5s against the Buzz and Zack Ray, including a heartbreaking SD. Just to really prove he deserved the spot, Meister fought through the last qualifier, Nightmare on Smashville, and he won handily, dropping just five games over nine sets. I, I choked at Big House, and then I got the last chance qualifier, bro. Suddenly, Meister had become a clear top 10 player in the world. Fourth at Smash Summit, third at Congo Saga, seventh at Let's Make Big Moves, fifth at Genesis 7, and recently, a second at Frostbite behind MKLeo. Meister has wins on Nairo, Light, The Buzz, Tweak, Gluttony, Zack Ray, and enough wins for a lifetime against Samsora. That's a win on 7 out of the other 9 top 10 players in this game. He's got winning records against 4 of those players, including a 5-0 set lead on Samsora. And after that successful season, Meister accomplished something historic. He reached 6 on the world's PGR rankings the first player in PGR history to go from being unranked to top 10 in one season. And his spot wasn't even disputed. It was clear he was one of the best players in the world. Even more remarkably, Meister just got there in three years. He went from going 1-2 at his first local in January 2017 to getting 6 on the PGRU in January 2020. For as much as he grew, so did the same very player who won at that first very local, MKLeo. Meister has a friendship and camaraderie with Leo, as he does with most of Mexico's great players. Leo was one of the first to see how great Meister could be. But Leo is a big reason why Meister still hasn't won a big tournament. Leo knocked Meister out of the bracket at Smash Factor 8, EVO 2019, Summit 2, Genesis 7, and recently 6 0 Meister at Frostbite when Meister was in the winner's side of the tournament. Meister has a 0 to 9 set record against MK Leo. Sixth place is incredible for Meister, but he could climb even higher. He's just gotta beat Leo. Leo is so dominant right now that it may seem impossible, but once upon a lifetime, it seemed impossible that a young, upstart Game & Watch main named the Wii Meister would become the sixth best player in the world. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more from Pro Guides. Hey. <laughs>